that this one single thing is displeasing in the eyes of God, is going to keep me away from doing an action that is displeasing in the eyes of God, he says what? He says, near Allah, it is valued than the performance of 2,000 rakas of recommendation bread. It's fun. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The Imam, he went to the Prophet, our Holy Prophet of Islam, said, Ya Rasulullah, we have so many amal, so many things to do in this holy month of Ramadan. Connected to Quran, praying, all these things. But what is the thing that is the best of actions in this month? He said the thing that is the best of actions in this month is to keep yourself completely away from the forbidden things. Forbidden things. I will quote one more narration and then I will continue to the main topic of our speech tonight and continue it, inshallah with a loud salawat. This is a hadith that I quoted before and I'm going to quote it again just for remembrance, just so we can reflect on it, especially in this holy month. If you look at society today, you see that the way they live in life, even Muslims, they do live in life that they're not like they're not afraid of fear Allah, like they're not afraid of Allah. They live life like that. And you will see that they will try to rob you or, or, or cheat you in any way they can. When you go overseas, you go to the market, something that costs 50 cents, they're gonna try and tell you three dollars. And then you have to fight your way until you probably get it to maybe 250. And then he will agree. They don't fail Allah. Or you see people, they come to the masjid, they are the first ones in the front row. But then as soon the minute they leave, they go to their stores and they continue selling their haram, their liquor, their pork, their whatever it is. What the Imam says, he says, to forego a single dirham of prohibited money, dirham is money, is equal near Allah 70 accepted hajj. Hmm. 70 accepted hajj. Meaning that if you know that this money that I'm collecting, that I'm getting from any means necessary, comes from haram means avoiding it which is very difficult it's difficult knowing that you know what i don't have no money i need to get things i probably only have one pair of shirt but i know that this money that is coming to me is haram means it's difficult to reject it it's hard it's hard for me it's difficult but what the imam says rejecting that leaving it huh the value of it, the reward of it, uh, what he says, 70 accepted Hajj. 70 accepted Hajj. You see, Hajj is something that becomes an obligation on a Muslim when he fit all the criteria. It's not an obligation. If you don't have the means to go, if you don't have the health to go, if you don't have the ways to go, it's not an obligation on you. So for some people, they might never reach that. It's the reality of it. They might never reach it. But you see what you see what the Imam says? He probably didn't went there physically. But refraining from haram, he get the reward of 70 of them. This is the beauty of Islam. Salawat. My main speech for tonight, inshallah, and the remaining nights of this holy month is going to be on repentance and tawbah. Because you see, this holy month, 
is the one that he says that the shaitan is in chains. And he's a man that you train yourself. That's in the nest. You train yourself for those other months. But you know what? We are human. We're not masoom. We're not infallible. So we fall short. We make mistakes. We may commit sin. But how do I repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The ayah that I read, it says, "Kul ya ibadi al-ladina asrafu ala ala anfusihim, O my servants who have transgressed against their souls." Meaning that you have committed a sin. You have committed a sin upon yourself. He says, "Despair not of the mercy of Allah." Spear not. Do not feel hopeless. Never feel hopeless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is there to answer you. He is there to forgive you. If you repent sincerely. He says, O oh my servants who have transgressed against their souls, despair not of the mercy of Allah. For Allah forgives all sins. For he is often forgiven, most merciful. Allah forgives all sins. I feel hopeless. There's a Lord. You see, in these nights, I want to get in in depth on what is forgiveness, what is tawbah, so we can fully understand it and realize that you know what this is something that is necessary and is an obligation and every believer to do when he falls short. Repentance. What is the meaning of repentance? If you look at the dictionary, it says that repentance, I give you a simple dictionary. Repentance huh, is an action, is a way of repenting or a way of feeling remorseful. Remorseful. I'm going to give you a deeper meaning now of what is repentance. A deeper meaning. Repentance. He who Al Abdu ila Allahi subhanahu wa ta'ala ibtigada an. He says, Repentance is the returning, the going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after disconnecting, disassociating yourself from any type of disease, any type of sin. That is keeping you away from connecting to him. This is what your repentance is. Ruju al Abdu ila Allahi subhanahu ba'da ibtiad an. The returning, doing ruju to Allah, going back. You see, because when we sin, when we commit a sin, we disassociate ourselves, we disconnect ourselves from our Lord. And the more you keep sinning, the more you keep sinning, the more you keep sinning, you will see that your heart becomes hard. It becomes dark. To the point that now, the sinful acts that we do becomes immune to us. Becomes immune. Have you ever really observed and see somebody doing an action and you ask yourself, man, how can he really do something like that? Like, can you really do something like that? And then you will see somebody has come and cheer it on. Oh man, yeah, that's something good. Because that 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 concealing, that sinning, that sinning, that sinning, that poison, you see that the heart becomes hard. That no matter if you bring the truth to them, go out there and do it. Bring the truth to them. You will see that there are people that no matter if you present them with the truth in any angle, they're going to reject it. They're going to reject it. Because of the amount of sins 
that they accumulate, but they don't repent. They don't repent. What is repentance? We say that repentance, right, tawbah, comes from the root words ta, wow, and ba. When you want to define a word in Arabic, you have to go into the root word of the word and you will get the definition from it. We say it all the time, tawbah, 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 repentance. What does it actually mean? It says tawbah, repentance, comes from the root word ta, wow, and ba. Which means to what? To repent or to turn from. Turn from. Tawbah, to repent or turn away from. That's what it means. And it says, huh? What causes a human being to want to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What gives him that urge? What is it? He says this re this ruju, this going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani for him. Where does it come from? It says the returning is because a specific reason because you feel remorse when you commit a sin you did something that you really regret it that you really regret it you really feel remorseful for it you will see that you're going to start yearning yearning for Allah you will see that you're going to want to go back to Allah you're going to see that you're going to say, Ya Allah, please forgive me, Ya Allah, for this sin. But how do you get there? How do you get to that remorse? If you say, Allah, Salawat, I will tell you, Salawat. <laughs> you see, the way to feel remorseful in such a way that you want to do wuju. You want to connect back with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only through one way. Through ilm. Through marifatullah. Having intimate knowledge of your Lord. The more you have intimate knowledge of your Lord, the more your level increase your marifah, the more you will see that when you fall into some type of sin, you will see that the level of regret, the level of remorse is going to be in such of a way that you won't want to do repentance. In this matter, salawat. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, Remorse is repentance. Why? Because you feel it. You know that, you know what? I did something really bad in the eyes of my Lord. And the only way for this to be removed is for me to go back to him. Because no one else can help me. If he decides to leave me, else can help me or guide me. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, Salawat. Allahumma Muhammad. He says, An nadamu ala khati'at istighfar. Remorse for his sin, feeling regretful. For a sin counts as seeking forgiveness. And seeking forgiveness, like I said, is doing ruju to Allah. Going back to Him. This is the month. It says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best of days in this month. 
the best of nights in this month. <laughs> what does that mean? That we use these days and these nights for what he said. That this is the month that the doors of his mercy is open. The doors of his rahmah is open. The way to seek him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tariq in Allah, that path to Allah, begins with one thing. Tawbah. Forgiveness. That's where it begins. So inshallah, bi'ithnillah, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the permission of Allah, we're going to use this holy month to educate ourselves at what is true tawbah, true repentance, in depth. So that inshallah, whenever we fall short, because it happens, we can connect back with our Lord. We can do rujur and then keep this connected from Him. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq and the ma'rifah to keep benefiting from this holy month. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq and the ma'rifah to understand his wisdom and his knowledge. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to make it to bait Allah, to make it to hajj. This is the month that you ask Allah to give you the tawfiq to be invited to his house. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength to continue these last, these remaining nights and days of this holy month with good health and good strength so that we can continue our fasting and benefit from it. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Salawat. Yes. How do we do the repent? Do we have to do the wuzu, sit down, go to the matches, or is just as you go driving, you go to the repentance? Well? Repentance is something individually, which means it's a connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In whatever state that you feel more connected to Allah. Now, being in wuzu, we say, is the best of state to be in, right? But no. You don't necessarily need to be in wudu unless you're going to do salat istighfar. Yes, unless you're going to do a certain prayer that is recommended to do for doing istighfar, for doing repentance. But you can be driving, and let's say you're driving, and all of a sudden a thought came to your mind that, you know what, I remembered that I did such and such action. Right then and then, without hesitating, you repent to your Lord. Repent to Him. It doesn't mean that you have to come to the masjid, it could be at home, it could be at work, it could be in the car, it could be in the bus, wherever you are. When you know that you know what, you feel that remorse, you feel that guilt because of something that you did, right then and then, you repent. Why? You see, when you commit a sin, it's just like a snake giving poison, you eating poison by a snake. Right? When you get poisoned by a snake, is not you have a bit of a chance to survive before that ambulance comes. Mm. The poison goes like this, right? Before the antidote comes and you and you remove. When you commit a sin, the poison of that sin goes through your soul two times faster than the poison of that snake. And what is the antidote of that? What is the, the remedy of that of that repentance? Of that sin? Repentance right then and there. Right then and there. Do not leave it accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. The more you leave it accumulate, 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 you become like Allah says in Quran. Deaf, blind, and dumb. Not physically deaf, not physically blind, not physically. What does it mean that no matter how much time the truth comes to you, the truth be presented to you? You will see that you will not see it. We can take it all the way to Karbala. For those who know the story of Karbala. We go to Umar, we go to Umar and the Sa'ad. Umar and the Sa'ad. The Imam summoned him. Right? In the eighth, I think the eighth of, of, of Muharram. That's when he arrived in Karbala. The eighth of Muharram. And the Imam summoned him. Imam Hussein summoned him. And they met. 
And the Imam, the Imam came to him and told him, Who knows my right and my status more than you? He said, Why don't you leave the army of Batin and come to the army of salvation? And then the Imam continues going and he tells him, This city that you're going to fight me for, that you think you're going to be rewarded for, this way, you will never achieve it, you will never get it. And then what did the Imam tell him? He said, I will build for you a house if you want from my own hands. Not only one, two, three, four, how many you want from my own hands for you to leave the army of Batil and come to the army of salvation, the army that is going to get you to Allah. So you see what happens when you sin and sin and sin and sin and accumulate these sin, these sin, these sin. That no matter how much time the, the Imam, what is more hujja, what is more proof than the Imam? And he is in front of you and he's telling you, I will build for you from my own hand so that you can follow up. And you reject it. So this again, repentance doesn't have to happen any in a specific way. And yes, being in wudu is the best of state. It says to be in wudu when you sleep and to be in wudu when you wake up in the best of in wudu. But to do sincere repentance is something when you feel that remorse. Not only when you feel that remorse and you repent, you don't repeat it again. When you don't repeat it again, that's when you know that you have done true repentance. And inshallah, we will get into all of these details, inshallah, in the coming nights, inshallah. Salawat. Astaghfirullah means meaning ruju. I'm doing istighfar, repentance to Allah. That's what it is. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah meaning repentance like tawbah. I'm doing istighfar. I'm doing ruju to Allah. So that's why I say when you do something right, to matter is astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. You know that way you keep in that. Remember, this is that the imams, I mean the prophets. They recommend to say Astaghfirullah 70 times or Astaghfirullah 100 times throughout the day. Because they keep you in that remembrance of, you know what? I have to be in constant remembrance that if I do something wrong, I automatically can repent. Right then and there. Right then and there. Okay. Uh, it says, do you put in 10 days of Ramadan? The first 10 days is. The ask the last forgiveness in the second ten days. I kinda I'm scared to speak on it because I don't I, if if you can aid assist me on the, the second ten days and the third ten days, which now may third. Um I personally don't have no knowledge of the first, second and ten days. But well, we know it as in the month of Shahab Ramadan we have the nights of power, Layla to Al Qadr. Right? right? Which is say this is the night that the Quran was revealed and this night is worth more than a thousand years and this is the night that all everything that you will be getting throughout that year that coming year will be manifested in that night mm -hmm. right that we know for sure the night of so it's the last ten nights mm -hmm. the last ten nights the last add numbers of the ten nights for example the 19 the 21st the 23rd you know, these are the nights of Laylatul Qadr. So this night is, we spend it especially doing ibadah, doing worship to Allah. And inshallah, you will be around so you will be there inshallah. Salawat. Yeah.